education uh, means making sense, at least for me, it means making sense of one's uh, experience. I'd like to evoke one memory uh, of my elementary school days in uh, Chelmsford, Massachusetts, um, in the 1950s. We would begin each day, as I recall, with the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag and by the recitation of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. I don't think I ever thought twice about the fact that we were doing both of those things. From today's vantage point, the oddity in that, I think, is in a public school, is the recitation of Psalm 23. At the time, it seemed to be something of a holdover of the, the sort of unofficial Protestant establishment in the public school system in our country. But at the time, it seemed to fit together seamlessly enough to give due recognition to one's country and to one's God. But as to the matter of making sense of one's experience, a question that rose to the level of awareness during my consumption <coughs> education and that has stayed with me since, it's been a source of, uh, say, endless fascination for me, is what does it mean to be both American and Catholic, at one and the same time to belong to a particular political society and to a community of faith. The key for me, I think, in working this out was discovering during my assumption education the concept of the regime. Um, that that, that uh, discovery was the most important experience that I had of what, what our mission statement now, now calls, our current mission statement calls, critical thinking. That every regime more or less answers to the question, what is the good life? The society, the regime in which we live is the air that we breathe. It's mostly taken for granted until one recognizes that it is the specific form of the answer to the question of what is the good life for those who live within it. To be an American is to be shaped by the passions that animate the American regime. But there was and is another formative influence in my life. And the idea of regime suggests that the regime does shape and form us in, in, in particular ways. Again, oftentimes that we don't let necessarily raise to the level of, of our awareness. And the other formative influence, of course, was, was the way of the gospel. So the question that presented itself was how does one make sense of these two competing authorities or influences. My assumption education, as I said, got me starting, got me started thinking about these things. And if anything, it helped me to understand the tension. Um, fruitful at times, uh, worth, worth certainly trying to understand that existed between these two parts of my identity, these two attachments that were central to who, who it is that, that I was. Now, how did an assumption education accomplish this? Through a careful reading of foundational texts in the classical and early modern religious, philosophical, literary, and political traditions. And by the example of two or three teachers for whom these were questions of the highest import. Now the tension between these two attachments can be expressed in any number of different ways. 
Let me just, just let me suggest three of them. The animating passion is, if you read, if one reads the, the uh, especially the early modern political theorists who provided the philosophical foundation for uh, modern political regimes, liberal, liberal political regimes, um, the, the animating passion, deepest animating passion, is actually self-preservation. You know, it's, it's a society that aims to protect the security of those who live within it. Ultimately, it's the fear of death which, is, which drives uh, the animating passion, if you want, of of modern liberal regimes. Yeah, so, you, on, on, so on one side, you had that, and on the other side, you had the, 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 uh, the spirit of the gospel itself, which is, one, 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 one might want to say here that it's, it's not simply a tension, it seems to be almost a contradiction, because at the heart of the gospel, over and over in the gospel we read, you know, the one who who loses his life is the one who will save it. Um, and the one who tries to save his life will, will lose it. So to, to, to own these two different attachments uh, was uh, a matter of trying to somehow come to terms with these two quite, quite distinctive ways of life.